Welcome back to the Keep On Growing Podcast. I'm Mike Van Dusen, and if you're new here, we talk about all things having to do with gardening and mainly hydroponics. We will get into like soil based and traditional gardening and that, but right now we're talking a lot about hydroponics and specifically today we're talking about dealing with the heat. Now with traditional gardens, you have to deal with the heat a lot, but now imagine you're taking a container of water and setting it out on a table in the sun and trying to grow a plant in it. So we have a little bit of challenges with hydroponics. Now I'm going to go over a couple of the obvious things that a lot of you are doing and uh, some of you out there may not realize this so I'll go over those first and then I'm going to talk about some things that I do and also some experiments that I'm working with. All right, the most obvious thing is just shading your stuff. It might come down to just shading your container. If you can get something around your container whether it be insulation or mulch or what have you, if you can shade your container and keep the nutrients cooler that's going to help a whole lot so some people shade the container and leave the leaves exposed so if it's not that hot yet where your leaves aren't wilting during the midday sun you can go ahead and do that and that's going to help because you have a little bit of a trade-off is when you do like I do where I give a lot of morning sun and an afternoon shade the plants aren't going to grow as fast as they do during the spring when you have awesome weather and you can have your plants out there all day long in the sun and they're just growing really well so if we want to grow during the summer we're gonna to have to deal with it a little and you're gonna have a little bit of a trade-off because you're gonna get that morning sun and then you need a little bit of shade or filtered sun for the rest of the day now I've also seen some people even dig holes and drop their containers down in there and that's cool that keeps the nutrients a lot cooler but uh, make sure that you put up a sign or a little fence or just let everybody know that that's there so they don't step on the top of it and like fall in and hurt themselves. Another thing you can do is mist your plants and some people have automatic misters set up so that makes it easier and even if it's not really hot once in a while you just want to water all of your plants and that might sound a little counterintuitive because with hydroponics your plants are getting all it needs the water from a reservoir but plants are used to being in nature and it rains once in a while sometimes it rains a lot and when we grow hydroponics sometimes we forget that since they're getting all the water they need from the roots we forget to water the plants so once in a while I like to go out there and not at night where it can sit on the leaves overnight just like your traditional garden you don't want to water late in the evening because it makes them more susceptible to disease and that I go ahead and do it in the morning or afternoon and I just water the plants once in a while a couple of days you don't have to do it every day I do it every three or four days maybe even once a week just whenever I, I think about it and I, it's more like getting back to nature and, and giving your plants a little fresh douse of water and clean their leaves off and um, sometimes we forget to do that now moving up to bigger and better things some people out there have made uh, larger containers and we use the analogy of like a swimming pool during the summer you get out there and you have a, a little frosty beverage and you're sitting by the swimming pool and with the, within a couple of minutes or 30 minutes your your drinks warm already but you go and jump in the swimming pool and it feels a lot cooler and it's because it takes that large mass to a lot longer for it to warm up than your little cup of coke and the same thing happens with our hydroponics. If you use very small containers and you put them out in the sun, they're gonna warm up very fast. So the larger the container you can have, the better. Now the problem with that is if you have plants with shallow roots that don't use a whole lot of nutrients, like lettuce has shallow roots, and you get a large container, it, you're gonna waste a lot of nutrients at the end because you're gonna have to keep it filled up so the roots are inside the nutrient solution and at the end of the day when you're all done you can have gallons and gallons of uh, leftover nutrients so you can have a larger container it's kind of pertinent to the plant that you have another thing that we've done is to get a large container and fill it with plain water like a kiddie pool somebody out there told me they used a kiddie pool what I do is I build a wood frame and put plastic in it and fill it up like a little pond and then put my containers inside of there. Now they don't have to be completely submerged, just the bottom has to be touching it. And as long as you've got a big mass of water 
and it's up a couple of inches on your containers it's going to help keep it cooler and the more submerged you can have it the better so if you're having five gallon buckets you can really place them in there if you have your plants on the top you can get them really deep in and you can get a large mass of water around them now to keep the critters and the mosquitoes and that at bay you can always spread neem oil some people use peppermint oil all kinds of stuff you can put inside that outside container you can even put salts in it whatever you want to put in it's not going to harm your plants because each one of your containers is self-contained and this is just a bunch of water to keep it cool now you can also put a pump I put a little pump a little fountain pump and it adds a little bit of uh, noise outside and it, it's uh, real relaxing sounds and it keeps the water moving so the mosquitoes don't like moving water to lay their larvae in so that helps you get a wind both ways now some people that have used the larger containers what they would do is get nutrients and freeze it overnight and then they'd come in and toss that into the nutrient solution into the reservoir during the hottest part of the day to try and cool down the solution and then they'd have to go through and check the the EC and the pH and everything and rebalance everything now when you make a pool a larger container to set your containers in your nutrients are not going to be messed with you leave that there and you've got the larger pool that's keeping everything cool and you can take that and you can actually toss ice in there to cool it down now if you don't want to waste water waste ice every day you can go over and get jugs milk jugs fill them up freeze them set them in your freezer overnight if you have like an extra freezer just have a bunch of these setting in there you can take the jugs and just set the jugs inside the pool and it'll bring the temperature down and then when they melt you can take them out set them back in your freezer and have them for the next day and with hydroponics using less than a tenth of the water that a traditional garden uses if you want to waste a little bit of water you can have these bigger containers and you can actually get your hose and just put it in there and turn it on remove some of the warm water and put some cooler water in you can waste a couple gallons of water because you're saving thousands and thousands of gallons over the entire grow compared to traditional garden so those are a couple of ways that I deal with the heat you guys let me know I'm thinking that the people out west or some people who say it's over a hundred degrees Fahrenheit where they're trying to grow that one of these methods might help you out I know that shading when it's over 100 like it's 110 115 degrees a little bit of shade is not going to help but if you can cool it down and if you can have a larger container around it if you can use frozen milk jugs to go ahead and keep that cool and then that doesn't mess with your nutrients it's all you're doing is co cooling down that nutrient solution maybe that'll help and maybe that'll extend your growing season even if you can't grow during the dead middle of the summer maybe you can extend your spring growing a little bit longer maybe you can get started in the fall a little bit sooner so all of these things like i said i hope they help these are things that i'm working on i'm gonna be doing a video and putting it out there for y'all but like i said i just like this where i can come on and just talk with y'all and tell you what's going on because a lot of you can understand that and you can go out and jump on it and, and get these things done and if you do share them with me share them in some of our groups or email me or whatever i like to know what y'all are doing a lot of the ideas and everything that i get came from all of you out there so thank you very much you guys are are the bomb you you help everybody out and and we're out there spreading the love so keep on and live to inspire keep on growing be the change catch you later